I see a vast body of water in a sailboat sailing across um, an undisturbed but beautiful seascape with clouds in the sky and birds. I see people holding hands walking down the beach. I, I love that. It's just a place where people feel whole, where their souls are being fed. Nobody I know wants this wind farm. Why should the benefit of one single company be the detriment of an entire community and communities surrounding the sound? If in fact the wind farm does go up where it's proposed, it will destroy the commercial fishing industry in the Nantucket Sound. People surely want alternative energy. We all want alternative energy. But we want to make sure it happens where the conflicts are least and where the benefits are most. And that's not Nantucket Sound. That will never be Nantucket Sound. What many people don't realize is the mass and scale of what we're talking about in Nantucket Sound. We're talking about an area the size of Manhattan Island, 25 square miles. We're talking about turbines that are 440 feet tall, each of them 100 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty. The blades alone, the size of some of the tallest monuments on the Cape and Islands. We're talking about a building, a transformer station, roughly eight, nine miles offshore, that will be one of the largest buildings on the Cape and Islands. So the mass and scale of this kind of a project is industrial development. This project that has now been in debate for more than five years holds back the development of offshore renewable energy because nowhere else will you have this kind of conflict. Identifying sites that are appropriate for alternative energy and that can serve Massachusetts and New England more effectively moves the effort for alternative energy faster and benefits more people. Certainly one of the charges that is leveled at all of us who are concerned about Cape Wind is that our only concern is not in my backyard. We've been zoning in this country for centuries and part of what that zoning is about is what's in our front yards and what's in our backyards. So the concerns of people for their view shed are totally appropriate. They say it's, it's about roughly the size of Manhattan. That's huge. So if you plunk that down into this beautiful water, without the buildings, but with 130 towers, it's mind-boggling. It doesn't belong here. It'll be so disturbing to the wildlife that's under the water, that flies above the water, not to mention all of us that, that get peace and, and appreciate the beauty of this place. There'll be no question that people standing on the beach looking out to the center of Nantucket Sound will see predominantly an array of wind turbines uh, offshore in, in what appears to be an, an industrial uh, development. It will be as prominent, if not more prominent, at night as by day. It's gonna look like a LaGuardia airport at night with the lights and the flashing strobes. It's not my backyard, it's free for everyone. And in fact, most of us that live here year round live on pretty low incomes. It's not something that's known about the Cape. I'm a carpenter, a working man. This industrial complex will affect our real estate values, affect our tourist economy, and affect the people that give me work. If the Cape Wind Towers end up in Nantucket Sound, it's going to be a definite negative impact on those property values. If those values are eroded, then it's going to affect everybody's taxes for the fact that there is less money or revenue coming in in taxes to the town till and everybody even in the smaller houses that don't have a water view and even in those people that don't go to the beach will be potentially affected in terms of their taxes. Tourism on Nantucket is our livelihood. It is the base of our economy. Easily, 75-80% of our economy is tourism-based. People don't come to uh, the Cape and Islands, they don't travel the sound to see industrial blight on the horizon. They come for its unique 
pristine qualities. And they will go someplace else. And we don't want to lose you know, our customers because of something that certainly could be cited somewhere else. A study with the Beacon Hill Institute suggests that as little as a 3%, 2 to 3% change in tourism costs over 2,000 jobs, has impacts of millions and millions of dollars on the economy. So little ripples in an economy that's this dependent on tourism have significant impacts. I'm a commercial fisherman. I fish in Nantucket Sound six months out of the year. If, in fact, the wind farm does go up where it's proposed, everybody will be displaced because um, there's not room to maneuver room amongst the towers. Having the wind farm there would cause me to travel farther, which is, of course is an increase in fuel, cost, expenses, and there would be a whole new learning curve on when do I catch the fish here, where, where do I catch the fish? I'm a board member of the Massachusetts Fishermen's Partnership, and collectively we've come out and said that this particular project is not any good to any of the fishing community. This is some of the richest spawning grounds for every major bait fish, as well as the fish that eat the bait fish. It's the best bass fishing in the world here. It doesn't take a whole lot to deter the fish, and that silt from putting in 130 footings is going to have a major, major effect. It's going to ruin a lot of people's uh, livelihood. Common sense dictates that if you stick these things out here and there's traffic compression and a lot of people coming in closer proximity to each other out here in the sound, that something's going to happen. And I think it's a recipe for disaster to put these, uh, this wind farm out in the middle of the sound. So this entire area over here would be just solid dots of windmills, basically. And on foggy days when you're, you're concentrating, trying to pay attention to what's going on in front of you, with all that massive stuff over there, it would be very difficult to see a boat. If you have 130 obstacles there, if your radar goes down in the fog or a snowstorm or something like that, it's just uh, people will die. The airports have safety concerns about clearance, they have concerns about uh, radar interference potentially, and then there's the search and rescue component. In the last three years, there have been three vessels that have gone down on or near Horseshoe Shoal that required search and rescue response that would not have been able to take place had the turbines been located on Horseshoe Shoal. What uh, frightens most people is the prospects of this being a very, very costly proposition that would be uh, essentially sub subsidized by uh, the taxpayers. And I don't think we can afford to do it in such a, a super sensitive place. The critical project cost is the capital, the, the investment to build a wind farm. The cost of trying to build a wind farm has more than doubled, probably even tripled in the past few years. Recently, a project off of Long Island was canceled because of escalating uh, capital costs and because it would need 29 cents a kilowatt hour in the wholesale market uh, to be a viable project. So compare that to the average price of wholesale electricity in New England, around 6.2 cents a kilowatt hour. We still haven't seen all the costs for upgrading the grid. I mean, we certainly have a transmission uh, cable coming ashore. We have to upgrade the substation in Barnstable. And they're talking about upgrades at the canal plant. we got to pay for that. And uh, we don't know the total cost to the consumer. I think wind power is a good idea. But it's incumbent upon us to make the choices of where we build projects and where we can build them large enough so they can have significant impact on our fossil fuel use and our needs for alternative energy. It's not going to be producing power around the clock. No one knows when the wind is going to blow, and if it doesn't match demand, there has to be backup power. And plants like Canal Electric or Brayton Point or nearby backup power plants can never be shut off because when the wind stops, they need to be tapped. If we could reduce our future demand by conserving electricity, uh, we wouldn't need as many power plants.
I think that the opposition here on Cape Cod was never anticipated by the developer, but he never tried to reach out to the community and say, I've got this idea, I want your input, I want your guidance. He picked a spot on the map and said, this is where my project's going to go, and if you don't like it, tough luck. This developer stands to receive more than a billion dollars in federal subsidies and state green energy credits over the life of the project. The electricity ratepayers pay the subsidies. Taxpayers pay for the production tax credit. So in many ways, we are this developer's partner. So therefore, we should have a major say in how this project takes place. Thousands and thousands of people have come together and said, yes, we're going to stop him because these are our waters. These are our lands. They belong to all of us. And we have a right to preserve them. What's wonderful about Nantucket Sound is that it's something different to everyone. For some, it's a place to go recreational fishing. For commercial fishermen, it's a place to earn their livelihoods on their boats in their waters. For some, it's a transportation corridor, a way to get to Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard from the Cape and a way to bring the goods and services that make our economies flow. But for no one, for no one is Nantucket Sound an industrial zone. No one thinks about coming to the Cape and Islands to visit a power plant. And that's what's at risk if this area is allowed to be industrialized by Cape Wind.